Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight from New York City. You look terribly fat there, uh, Chuck. With I know, that. that's I know. really a, a lot it's really a lousy it's Chuck Farnham, ladies and gentlemen. That's a really lousy fat-so. thing there. It's fat so. It's what? I'm fat so. You're fat so? Yeah, no, I moved over here because uh Blind Bob was uh, giving me some trouble, and uh, yeah. he's staring longingly at me. So I. Uh, Blind Bob is a dog, folks. There, yeah, oh, here, he's, right. He's, he's right here. Bob. There's Blind Bob. Blind Bob, how you doing? Say hi to everybody. Does he bump into walls and stuff? Uh, yeah. Really? He loves to. He loves, loves to get underneath you and have a good time. Don't you, Bob? Dogs don't seem to have the same ability at being blind that cats do, because they don't have whiskers. No, he's you know, a great little guy, and he just loves to kind of hang out. And if for you cats, put him next to you, he'll live there all day. Yeah, for cats, their radar are like their whiskers. You know. Yeah. Okay. Put my big stomach back up here and my okay. head. And... Yeah, there we go. Okay, because he's using a iPhone because he's on location. He's not in I'm Nevada. He's not in Nevada. He's in. Uh, I'm in Modesto, visiting Blind Bob. Visiting Blind Bob. Anyway, yep. uh, you know, I mentioned in the last episode that I what, what we should get into in greater detail than we have in the past. You had a hobby. It was one of the I weirdest did. hobbies I think any human being has had. I was just. Here he is. There he goes. Yeah. I was just curious. I got a rock in front of this thing. I was just curious about one thing. Mm-hmm. Was the death penalty a valid way of solving a problem? Well, I've always said no. Right. And the statistics. Right. And, you and I had this conversation. And the statistics and said, well, would prove sure. us. The statistics would prove us right. Because uh, anytime it's interesting that anytime uh, a death penalty was put in place in a state, the murder rate went up. Right. So I thought, well, maybe I should talk to people who are on death row and see how they feel about it. Mm-hmm. And strangely enough, I mean, most people, I guess, don't know this. It, it's not that hard to talk to people on death row. All you have to do is figure out their inmate number and you can send them a letter. So I started sending letters and all the, let's put it this way, all the big names replied. Okay, let's talk about those big names. First of all, there was a guy that um, that called my radio show from death right. row named Dean. And I think that was the right. first one, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that dog is wonderful. I told you, Bob. Bob loves me. <laughs> anyway, a Dean um, uh, started calling my show. You yeah. Know? And I said to him, I think even on the first call, I said, "I'm not going to ask you what you did or if you did it." He said, "Well, you know, I'm not in here for traffic tickets." That was his reply. Right. And and we got along pretty well. He used to call me at home too and we get along yeah, in conversation. Yeah, called me at home a lot too. He'd been a former cameraman for CNN in Alaska. Yep. And um he was a cute uh, See, I never knew what he did. I never asked him what he did. And he wrote a column for my first one of the first websites ever, The Surfing Monkey. Right. And uh, that we were running. And, uh, you know, it was uh, you and I and David B. Edney who ran the thing. Um, 
And I never, I, I, I said, I'm, I'm never going to ask you what you did because I don't want to know because that's going to affect my judgment of you and I don't like that. I like the judgment of you being my relationship to you when you call me and we talk about stuff and I determine whether you're stupid or whether you're decent or whatever. And, right. And what I found was a pretty, I mean, decent individual, but then again, people who are on death row become con artists. Right. Yeah. So I... And he uh, didn't exactly just do it once. Well, here's what happened for me, okay? Uh, first of all, I went out there to see him on death row or in the prison, and I brought Lori with me. I, I remember it because I showed up wearing a pair of jeans, and he said, can't do that. Yeah. Can't wear jeans in here because everybody wears jeans in here, and you could be a prisoner trying to escape. Here, you have to put on these white cover o o o pants, which they put over my jeans, okay? And it had a lipstick, a uh, 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 what a kiss mark, by from lipstick on the crotch. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, I had to wear that. Meanwhile, Lori Thompson, who's going in with me, shows up wearing a dress that can only be described as a uh, sausage casing. Nice. You know, I mean, real tight, form fitting. But out to no here. problem with that. And she had the she had the the, uh, the uh, uh, abundancy of large breasts at that time, uh, and uh, I will go no further. Well, they we talked about them, didn't we? That she yeah, actually, we had, she had, I did this, uh, she paid for those. She, she had them done. Yeah. Yeah. So she walks in with a sausage casing dress, and they don't even stop her. I mean. There are prisoners doing work outside, and they're all staring at her and drooling. You know, and I'm going, boy, does she really want to make these guys suffer? Yeah. And then we go in, we meet Dean, they have him in shackles, okay? It's a big right. show. Put him in shackles, all right? But he was a really tall guy. He's a big guy. He was like six Yeah, yeah. No, seven. he was, he looked menacing. And they put us in this cage alone with him. You know, so, but it, it, it was very nice and so on. So anyway, I got to know the guy. He called me at home every every Saturday. He'd call me from the prison, and I would okay the call. And usually I had to pay for it. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. Uh, and at, at prison rates, by the way. Yeah, uh, the, which, yeah, it's like they're screwing you and me because we want to talk to somebody in prison. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I started talking with him. One day, I'm, I'm going with my ex-girlfriend, Xanthi. You remember her, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she says, you know, it's just not right that you're, you're, you're friends with a guy on death row. And I said, well, we don't know what he did or didn't do, you know. Uh, and, and I'd rather not know. And she said, well, you know, there's a, uh, there's a library right down the street here. We could go down and see, look up his name in magazines. And I went, well, okay, what the hell? Red Book? Red Book. Yeah. Comes up. A Kiss from My Killer was the name of yeah. the article. I find out that he has killed, been accused of killing five women. Right. Over a period of what, three days? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, he um, also um, was convicted on four, and they were holding the other one in abeyance just in case he slid on the other four, and they gave him the death penalty. Right. All right. They so now I read wearing... this, I read this, and I'm horrified. I mean, all five oh, yeah. were strangled to death by hand. Now, I, I like a guy who works with his hands, okay? I like people who are into crafts, but that's a misuse of your hands, all right? Yeah. You know? But it it struck me so horribly that the next time he called me at home, I didn't accept the call. Oh, wow. Uh, I couldn't do he it. He did have big hands. Oh, yeah. So I, uh, I, I hung up. And I felt guilty about it because here I am, Mr. Mr. Liberal, and I read an article in Red Book 
which is not the most reputable magazine going. You just lost your picture there. Yeah. Uh, 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 I slid my leg. I, I, I really, I really should talk to him. So the next time he calls, I take the call. And I say, I gotta admit something to you. I gotta admit, the last time you called, I was here, but I just didn't accept the call. And I said, the reason I didn't is my girlfriend dragged me down to a library and we looked up what you did. Uh, today, all I'd have to do was go on, you know, on the, the internet, Wikipedia, and I'd immediately find out what he did. And I said, and so when you called, I said, it so kind of bothered me that I couldn't talk to you. And he says, yeah, I get that a lot. I said, well, let, <laughs> uh, let me apologize for doing it. You know, my relationship to you has nothing to do with what you did with your arts and crafts with your hands. Uh, right. It's, you know, it's what you are to me and talking with you, and I enjoy it. Uh, and, yes. you know, and, you and, and that was the first guy, that, the only <laughs> guy in death row that I ever knew. The only other one was one who was going to be executed who tried to call me and they wouldn't let him uh, at the prison because they said he, he had a phone in his cell, right? That's what they give people who are condemned. And uh, he's starting to make a call and they said, well, who are you calling? Because they had to keep tabs of it. And he said, I'm calling Alex Bennett on his radio program. They said, no, you're not. And they snatched, they took the phone away from him. Oh, wow, that's weird. Because they didn't like me because I was anti-death penalty. Right. You know? That makes sense. And so I never got to talk to the I guy. Guess. Never got to talk to the guy. They executed him, and the last words he would have wanted to say were something to me. Wow. That was my only other death row thing. But you yeah. didn't stop there. You first, first you got to know Dean. I got to know Dean. Yeah. And then uh, there was um, Charles Ng. Now explain Charles uh, Ng. Ng uh, and uh, uh, Leonard Lake up in Northern California built a bunker and tortured women in the bunker and then videotaped it and killed them. Hmm. They and, you know, I actually went down and uh, testified at his trial. Uh, yeah, you testified on his behalf. Yeah. What did you What did you say? They wanted me to. He didn't want me. the The, the district attorney wanted me. <laughs> they wanted my opinions of the death penalty and whether I thought it was just in this case. So I said, <clears throat> "Yeah, I would do it." And I came down, and I'd never met Charles before. I mean, we talk on the phone all the time. But I believe that if Leonard Lake had killed himself, Charles wouldn't be on death row. Why? Because you didn't feel he had that much to do with it, or what? Well, he had stuff to do with it, but Lake, uh, Charles is one of those guys who um, kind of a go-along sort. Okay. You know? Hi, hey, Liam. You know, let's go get an ice cream. Okay, Charles. Well, you know, and I think he got talked into a bunch of it. I don't think I. I think he was easily manipulated, and whatever Leonard told him to do, he did. Wow. So, so then Lake committed suicide, right? Right. And then Charles ran to Canada, and they drug him back, and. The more I got to talk to him, the more he was exactly that guy that I thought he was. The guy who you could talk into anything, and Leonard Lake talked him into doing this, and he did it. Did they finally execute him? No, he's still uh, living, uh, you know, San Quentin. Oh, really? Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was speaking to origami. He likes origami. Wow. Okay. So uh, nice guy, not, you know, he didn't seem like the sort of guy who would do something like this. But he was given the death penalty, but then they did away with the death penalty in California, right? Right. Right. So though all those guys are not on death row at the moment. Well, are they I mean is is Dean off of death row now? 
Right. They're all sitting there because there's a moratorium on the death penalty in California. And probably it'll government. probably never come back in their lifetime, right? Right. Well, if, uh, yeah. you know, the governor changes, and I think if the governor decides to bail out, I think he's probably going to pardon everybody. You know, they'll, get, they'll all end up with life without at that point. Yeah, right. Right. Okay, so next... Here, uh, this is the big one, right? Oh, uh, there was Manson. Well, you didn't. You, wait a minute, did you know Manson? Yeah, yeah. Oh God, he, he would send me samples of his hair. He sent you samples of his hair. Yeah, you need some. I, I still have that. And by the way, they said he died of natural causes. There is no way that guy died of natural causes. What do you mean? He was like 82. Yeah, but they were like, oh, he had this wrong and this wrong. And I'm like, no. No, they also said that uh, uh, Richard Ramirez died of natural causes. I know Richard. I knew Richard okay, very well. well. Let, let's take him one at a time, okay? <laughs> we're, having, we're having killer overload here. There's a lot of killers involved here now by the way if, if you think about it manson didn't do anything right manson he, was accused he just told people to do he stuff. just told people to do it and so he right. was sentenced to death and then much like leonard lay and then they leonard did away lay with told. the death they did away with the death penalty so he wound up having to spend the rest of his years in in prison right because he also wasn't serious about parole no. You know, whenever he'd go for parole, he'd he'd have the uh, you know the swastika in his forehead, but he would act out of out of you know crazy. Yeah, uh, and and so he they never paroled him. You know, if he had one time went in halfway sane, saying I'm sorry for whatever I did, he probably would have gotten out. Yeah, he might have. Yeah, but his so music was okay. So what was he like? Um, quiet, not. He'd write these, I get these letters with swastikas on them and stuff. And they were red and red paper. I don't know where you get red paper, but he had red paper. And they were just rambling on about, you know, society not being okay and this and that and this and that. And and if you look back on it now, he was probably right about society. Well, what did he know about society though? Out of how many years of life? Did he spend incarcerated? I mean, he was incarcerated before uh, he was right. ever arrested for the uh, the Sharon Tate early, thing. Early seventies. Yeah, yeah. But you know, those guys read and they interact with people who were on the outside, and he got beat up a lot. As did you know, well, all he, the famous he, guys did, need to get beat didn't up he, because didn't they're he get, famous. Didn't he get stabbed at one point? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, would you say you liked Charlie Manson or? Um, not the kind of guy I would hang out with. Yeah. I mean, I would hang out with Ng. I have no problem with that at all. Manson's a little too crazy. Okay, so we You know, get, he's all worked up all the time. So we get to the other biggie. Uh, there was a guy in uh, L.A. they referred to as the Night Stalker. Right, boy, that's really a nickname you want to have, right? Hey, I'm the I'm right. the Night Stalker, you know. Yeah, and his name was Richard Ramirez. Uh huh. And what, did, what was he accused of doing? Um, terrorizing L.A. over a period of uh, nine or nine months, maybe eight months. Mm hmm. A night going around stabbing people and killing them. How many murders? Do you remember? I uh, maybe eight. Really? That many? Yeah. So they finally caught it was him. A lot. And and by the way, Ramirez was not an ugly looking guy. He was he was a scary looking huh. guy, but he wasn't ugly. You know. And, and I was there. Well, you want you want to know how I met him the first time? I was there to meet with Dean. And Dean wasn't out of, you know, his cell yet or whatever. And and then Dean came out, and then Dean had to go to the bathroom. Well, if you have to go to the bathroom and you're in the visiting room, there's a process. 
So I go, he goes, I really have to go to the bathroom. I'm like, okay. He goes, why don't you go talk to your buddy? And I go, my buddy? And he goes, don't you know Mr. Ramirez? And I said, well, we corresponded, but I don't know him. I never met the guy. And so I go, he goes, well, you know, he's over there with his wife. And I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. So the Dean leaves and I'm sitting in death row. And so I kind of, Dean's where uh, Ramirez's wife is talking to somebody else. Now you didn't, so you, were, you were in an uh, actual, Ramirez. wait a minute, wait a minute. You were in an actual room, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like a, a, yeah, a little visiting room with all the guys at once. They don't do that anymore. Yeah, no, well, when I did it with, with Lori, they put us in like a big uh, jail Now cell. it's all cages. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So... I get up and I go around behind where Ramirez is sitting and I said, hey, Richard. And he goes, Chuck. Next thing you know, he's hugging me. And I'm like, this is what my life has come to. Richard Ramirez is now hugging me. And he's like, how are you doing? And he's the sweetest human being you ever met. And if you look into his background, he just had a bad life. He grew up with bad parents, bad neighborhood, and got himself involved in something. Yeah. Now, say six months later, I'm coming to see Dean again, and I come in and I go to give my ID to the cop, and the cop, I'm standing there, and the cop goes, Somebody's trying to get your attention. And I go, what? And he goes, somebody's trying to get your attention. And I, and I go, uh, okay. And he goes, turn around. And so I turn around. Ramirez has been in protective custody behind glass. And he keeps making the sign of the little heart with his hands. A heart? Yeah, a little heart. That and I go... Oh, crap. So I can't talk to him because I'm there to talk to somebody else. So about two days later, I get a letter in the mail because I'd been, I'd been kind of counseling Richard on what, because he was mewling and drugged in this angle. And I knew this. And the reason he was mewling drugs is so he wouldn't get beat up because he always had the wife coming in. And then they leave, you get a drug. It, it was horrible. And I said, Richard, you got to stop doing that. That is not going to, it's not going to work. And he goes, well, they keep saying they're going to beat me up. And I go, well, let them beat you up and then they'll get in trouble. Just be careful. And don't stop doing the drugs. Mm -hmm. Stop mewling in the, he goes, Chuck, I don't take drugs. I go, no, no, I know. Don't mule them in for the other guys. So he goes, that's why you saw me behind protective custody. They knocked my teeth out. I did what you said, Chuck, but I did what you said. I did not mule in the drug, <laughs> and then they got angry. I go, but now they're not going to hurt you, right? He goes, no, they can't get to me now. Well, he ended up dying of natural causes, and he was 50 years old, and there ain't no way that guy died of natural causes. Yeah. Yeah. So he anyway, was a great it, guy. He just, if he would have been hanging out with you his entire life for me, he would not have turned out to be the night stalker. Wow. So did he, he never talked to you about his crime, so, right? Oh, yeah. What did he say? He said he did him? Oh, yeah. No, no, he definitely did him. Wow. But he didn't understand that it was wrong to do them. He didn't have that mental capability. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. No, he just, he grew up and never, you know, you know, it's okay to throw the the doll when you're one and a half years old, but it's not okay to, you know, chop somebody's head off when you're 25. He, there was no, he hmm. couldn't get between those two things. Well, anyway, we're running out of time here. There were no other uh, serial killers. Oh, yeah, I used to get, I got... Christmas cards from Manuel Noriega. Uh, I knew uh, Son of Sam. 
<laughs> All those guys. Well, maybe we'll talk about them next. Yeah. Yeah. This is Chuck Farnham. You know why he's, been, right, my, buddy. Why he's been my friend for years? Because he's the weirdest human being I know. Somebody's got to be. I noticed we're so, out. Uh, you know, have a nice day from uh, me and Blind Bob here. Yeah, well, I'm, we're a little out of sync today, so I, I hope this plays all right. I mean, it's raining like a out here. Yeah. Oh, oh, there we'll, he is. We'll leave with old Bob there. Talk to you next time. All right, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Chuck Farnham. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, right. Thank you very much, Chuck. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. That's Chuck Farnham. And uh, some weird stories, right? You enjoy those? I hope you did. About serial killers, his hobby. <laughs> anyway, how are you? What's happening? What's new? Uh... You know, as usual, I'm tired. Um, I, 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 think maybe, I think what it is, I'm bored. I've got to do something to put some excitement into my life. But who knows? Who knows? Anyway, I will drink the coffee. Mm. Mm. There we go. Okay. Well, there's some people waiting to come on here, and I, who am I to stop them, huh? Who am I to stop them? Uh, let me see here. Um, boo -doo 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 -doo. Here they come. Here they come. There we go. There's uh, Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charlie. He's connecting to his audio. Uh, is he connected yet? No, I guess not. Uh, uh, but let's go to... Uh, oh, oh, there he is. Hello, Charlie. Hi. Hi. Okay, you all right? Oh, yeah, I'm just tired. It got rained out again tonight. And you're tired. Yeah. I'm always tired, too. I don't know what it is. I, it's just the way I am. Brian, Brian, however, is giving a little smile there about me being tired. Right, Brian? Oh, I was going to say Charlie just wants to copy you, but I'm tired, too. I just drove two hours, though. That's why. Oh, yeah. I had to drive all the way to the field tonight, get ready, get everything set up, and then it starts raining. Oh. Well, Do you get paid for that? Nope. Nope. Oh, no, 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 no. They they need to pay you. It's Texas. It's Texas. Yeah, they don't need true. to pay you. California, California if you go to work them. and they don't have work for you, they still pay you four hours. Really? Yeah, well, we have to no. walk, around, walk around and pick up trash. Wow, yeah. that's yeah. terrific. That's terrific. Anyway, uh, so anyway, I'm just, I don't know, I'm tired all the time. Uh, I guess, you know, I, I keep wondering why I'm tired all the time. And then I remember that I'm 84 years old. <laughs> and that could be the reason why I'm lightheaded and tired, you know, so. And I've got a touch of a little chemia, you know, so. Well, just a touch. Yeah. I'll always use that as the excuse. Sorry, dear, I can't take out the garbage. Why, oh, my leukemia is acting up. My arthritis works for that. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you don't have anybody to give the excuse to. Not anymore, but it worked for a long time. Well, do you so, have do you have um, arthritis? I have two kinds of arthritis. Two kinds? <laughs> I didn't know there was more than one. Oh, there's dozens of kinds of arthritis. Okay, so what kind of arthritis, what kind of arthritis do I you have? I have rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. Now, which one is the least painful? Osteo. Osteoarthritis is least painful. Yeah, and that is what? That is, that is uh, how That's is... the bone degeneration in my knee. I see. Actually, it's cartilage degeneration, so the bones are rubbing against okay. uh, So the rheumatoid other. arthritis is what? That's a, 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 an inflammatory reaction of, of your, uh, your immune system attacking your own body. Oh, okay. My body's trying to eat itself. Oh. When did Fred Sanford have? I don't remember. Did he, did he have arthritis? Yeah, he did have. I don't remember what kind he had. So. I've got arthritis in this hand. That's it, basically. I, I think I'm getting in a couple other places too now, but that's that was a a major uh, place that I got it. So, you know, uh, and I every now and then I you go in and you get uh, shots for it. 
Uh, for the osteoarthritis, I, I go in every year or so and get an injection. Of, uh, of cortisone, right? No, this is something called uh, uh, Synvisc. It's a viscous fluid that cushions the knee to replace the uh, cartilage that I don't have anymore. Yeah, uh, there's a, a thing that Marjorie does. It's a it's a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's not uh, it's not the cortisone. It's the hydro something gel. acid. It's a gel that they put in. But that's what the sin biscuits. Huh? It, it, that's what the sin. It's kind of a gel like substance. And they, do they have to do like it. three visits to do it. Yes, they do. Yes, three that's Mar that Marjorie's taking that. And she I'm must thinking, have rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, osteoarthritis. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking of getting that for my hand. He suggested it, but it does two different things. The cortisone does something different than the gel does. Yeah. The cortisone stops the swelling. Yep. And the gel and therefore stops the pain. Hopefully, the, the gel supposedly kind of causes, creates a uh, fluidness and a, you know an ease of whatever. And well, my pain in my knee is from the bone rubbing against the bone because there's no cartilage there. By the way, I hope all the yeah. young people in our audience are enjoying our show tonight. I love it. Yeah. Uh, are you, Jeff being the youngest one here, are you enjoying it, Jeff? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, okay, good. Do you have Today, arthritis yeah. at all? Excuse me? Do you have arthritis at all? Oh, yeah. I think so everybody gets it, don't they, eventually? About 860, yeah. everybody gets it. Yeah. I got a little bit of it. And then I got that trigger finger thingy. When I wake up, when I wake up, I open my hand like that, the thing goes, bing, you know? Oh, really? Yeah, what? that happens sometimes, too. Where I've never had that happen. Instead of smoothly moving. Yeah, like one finger will hold up and then it pops out. Yeah. Yeah. So you can get uh, a cortisone injection there, and that'll solve it for about a year, Brian. No, I like it because when I flip somebody off, everything goes slowly, and this one goes bing. Good idea. Well, I, uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've had this arthritis uh, quite a few years now, but it's only right here. It's all the only place it shows up. I'm also getting something in my knee. I've got a thing, but that's from the fall, which I think may have turned into arthritis. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. damage your knee falling, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and occasionally I will go in when it gets really bad and they give me a cortisone shot there. And I'll tell you, I love cortisone shots because they're so much fun. Is this your torn meniscus? What? Is this your torn meniscus? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know if it's a torn meniscus. I don't know what it is. All I know is he sticks the needle in there. It hurts like a son of a bitch. And then I'm okay, you know, yeah, for, yeah. for at least a cup, but six. Three, I love when the doctor three. says this is going to hurt a little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, the uh, the last time he did my my hand, uh, he stuck the needle in, and when he pulled it out, blood came spurting. Yeah. Oh, Have you had that happen? Uh, a couple times when I had my knee injected. Oh yeah. boy, yeah. But anyway, so I and I've got to go back to him because it's come back again. So. But, uh, you know, that's what happens when you get old, folks. You know, you just get, uh, you start falling apart. Just yeah, so go ahead and die so you don't have that happen to you. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, what's the alternative? <laughs> apparently, knock on wood, I'm not close to that yet. You know, every time I get a cancer, it's the good cancer. So, you know, whatever. That's a good idea. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I can't I'm believe going it. I'm going to the doctor I, on Monday. I've had two kinds of cancer. So, I know, I know. You know, uh, one is a blood cancer, though, so it's probably not caused by you know anything else. So, anyway, you know. Well, that's it, folks. Good night. We've said yeah. how. Do you have any any anything wrong with your body yet, Brian? You seem to be in pretty good shape. Yes, I. Yeah. You do. Yeah, but you know, like my sciatica, that pops up every six months. But actually, since I lost some weight, it hasn't come back. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I get a little blurry vision and stuff like that every once in a while. A little what? A little blurry vision. Stop the Viagra and your vision <laughs> can get blurry. Oh, really? The fix is worse than the problem there. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, just little things. That's all. 
small stuff. Yeah, and I want to ask either Jeff or Kevin because I know they both have a myriad of uh, of, of problems. Uh, but then I, I feel like it's because I haven't been working out the last like two months, so I've been so busy with work and stuff. So good excuse, but I, I, yeah, I haven't been working the same out. Way. So. I haven't been working out for the past mm -hmm. two decades. So. <laughs> I work out every day. <laughs> Do you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Your yes, right hand doesn't yes, count. <laughs> what what Jeff? I don't think it's a problem. I think these are opportunities to keep me alive. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, so I'm I'm getting uh, the laser done on one of my eyes on Monday. The laser? Oh, you're doing laser uh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Cataract surgery. Cataract. Yeah. Oh, cataract yeah. surgery. That's not cataract. laser. Yeah. That's not laser. No, that's right. It is just cataract. Yeah. Well, hey, Jeff, we'll help pitch in for the other one if you need it. No, they just right. what one. they do with the with the cataract surgery is they pop out your lens in your eye and they put mm -hmm. in a, a phony they one. They use a laser to do that. What? They use a laser to do that. No. Yes. Mine did. Mine Since didn't. He scooped go. it out with an uh, with uh, with like a ice cream scooper. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. No. Well. No, they didn't use laser. Well, mine did. Really? The, the newer, the mind, newer uses laser. They've learned. Yeah, how to get, mine was in 2016, so that's what eight years ago. God, yeah, yeah mine was. Already? Gee, I think Jeez. mine was even earlier than that. I think. I'm trying to remember. He used know. to use a really sharp knife to cut the uh, the the lens. It's a thin, on on a little thing. I'm glad they didn't do that because I was awake during. Well, they they. Oh, uh, uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't have seen it because you would have been numb, just like they do with the laser. They numb yeah. up your eye, they burn out the area, and it, mm. they put a new lens in. Yeah. yeah. It, it used to be a very complicated operation, and now it's nothing. It's yeah. just nothing. Did I mean, you have I, the I, other eye done yet, Jeff? No, that's going to be... The idea is that maybe that the one is so good that I don't even have to do anything. Well, they, they talk about your eye getting ripe. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and when it's ripe, that's when they do it. And they did it in mine, and then the next about a year later, my other eye got ripe, and yeah. we did that one. And uh, you know, I mean, the only thing that's hurt my vision now is I take some medicine that causes bad vision, among other things. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, thing for uh, uh, that I take for uh, the uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, pregabalin for the neuropathy mm -hmm. and it, it has a tendency to cause blurry vision because I find if I stop it for a couple of days my vision clears up you know so what the yeah. hell you know so here it is uh, it's um, we've only got we're only 15 minutes into the show and I've got nothing to talk about so <laughs> well actually I do you know um, I've been watching television I'm, hearing a description of what's going on in the courtroom at the Trump trial. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to tell you, I, to begin with, I was, I, I was amazed at how intelligent um, Stormy Daniels is. She's very sharp. Yeah. She's no dummy. And I think she, compo she, she handled herself as well as could be possibly expected. And I say that because she goes in with a deficit of being having her first name being porn star <laughs> you know and um uh with that deficit she went in and i think handled herself beyond anybody's expectations the, you, know? you know when you're going in on a trial like that the district attorney takes you in and coaches you too so yeah. i mean she may be a smart person i'm not putting that down but they usually coach you so when questions come I've up heard her talk about all these various moments yep. in her life and oh, okay. and she's been on 60 minutes or she's been yeah. on something else and really her presentation is not wavered for what she did in court. So I don't think she was coached that much. I think they sat no. down with her and Maybe said, not. you know, don't volunteer anything. There are a couple of rules right. your lawyer gives you about uh, if they try cross examination just, you know, just don't don't uh, just answer the question they ask you, and that's it. Don't give them any more information. So, but um, 
I think she I wonder if they're gonna I wonder if they'll release the uh, transcripts after they find him guilty or not guilty or whatever. That would be interesting. Because you know in court they're gonna ask her to describe his penis. It's part no, of a, no, part of a they, rape. No, they have no reason rape to trial. They, have, they have no reason to. Sure they do. No, they don't. She's done you, anyway, isn't why, she? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why would they? Tell me, because, because you know because everything, he's, Alan. He's denying. No, I don't know everything. He's denying that they ever had sex. It doesn't matter whether they had sex or not, though. You could still have us. It doesn't matter whether they had sex or not. What they're arguing about is $130,000 they paid yep. her and how it was paid and what part of the company it paid, paid for and how much was hidden. It has nothing to do with whether she slept with him or not. That's or because, whatever, whatever what? the shape of his penis is either. No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter whether she slept with him. She could be no. lying about sleeping with him. They still paid her one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and that's what the court case is all about. So it doesn't matter whether she slept with him or not. And I think she's done anyway, isn't she? Yeah, she's pretty yeah, well finished. Yeah. 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 Oh, that testifying? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, she finished today, and then they brought in that that's that um, secretary or whatever that. Yeah. Pushes along and the, the checks, and, and then and I guess tomorrow or in, the next day they bring in Cohen. They bring in, uh, yeah, that'd be probably the that's first. That's going to be the juicy part. The first mm -hmm. of next week will be Cohen. Okay. And and Cohen is, I think, a linchpin in all of this because even if you don't believe him, I mean, even if you think he's a liar, the one thing he can't lie about are all these checks that were made out to him with his yep. name on them. It yep. went through his bank account. Huh? Yep, went through his bank account. Yeah, and it's got Trump's signature on them. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know what a jury's going to say, you know, but I do think uh, that he certainly is in a bit of a mess. I would, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Sure. You know, certainly it doesn't look great. I'm and, surprised he hasn't. If he had a good. Uh, 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 lawyer that they would be looking for a plea bargain to stop the trial oh no he never plea bargains no he never does. he never no. plea bargains yeah. that's he, what he that's what roy Cohn taught him you never plea bargain yeah well and i don't think that at this point the state wants to plea bargain i think they've got enough on them that they're gonna let hope the jury sees it all you know yeah, okay. but you never know what a jury's going to do. So. Well, that's that's the problem. You never know what a jury's going to do. That's right. Um, that's why many times you'd like to settle is just because you don't want to take what a, a jury might say. But yep. he's not going to settle. He's he's because to do so would be to have to admit to a certain extent guilt, and he can't do that either. And today he wanted to be able to get out of his. Uh, uh, thing about uh, you know his um, um, not having not being able to say anything in public uh, the gag order he wanted to get out of the gag order so he could reply to the things publicly that um, Stormy Daniels had said mm -hmm. and the judge said that's not the place you do it the place you do it is here in the courtroom right when you make your summation you know or maybe maybe you want to go ahead and uh, testify yourself. If you want to testify, once you're up here on this stand, you can say anything you want to. You know, a lawyer's gonna, any good lawyer is not gonna let him testify because if he agrees to testify, he waives his Fifth Amendment rights. He can't take I, the Fifth. And your it. point is, of course he can't take the Fifth if, you, if, you, if uh, you're up there. Right. But my point you is, know, if most you're people, in, uh, if most you're, people that, that talk for themselves end up if screwing you're, something If you're up. being yeah. deposed, if you're being deposed, you can take the fifth. But if you're, yeah, but the, that's before the trial started. Yeah, that's that's part of discovery. But anyway, so, anyhow, so, yeah. is there anything else in the news? Hmm. Isn't there no. anything else? What were you going to say, Jeff? I mean, Jeff. I didn't. I mean, no. I mean, I Charlie. They keep talking about if they push all these trials back until November and he wins the election, then he can pardon himself. 
Mm -hmm. But I thought one of the things you have to do when you go get a pardon is you have to admit your guilt. Yes. So why would he pardon himself as he gets up and say, yeah, I did all this crap and well, I'm pardoning myself. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nixon was pardoned and he never admitted his guilt. Mm -hmm. He didn't pardon himself. No, he didn't pardon himself, but I mean... Well, if he wants to pardon himself, he has to admit his guilt. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know no, if but he was, he was pardoned by... Uh, uh, Ford, I, I by Ford, but I think. By Ford. Uh, well, I have oh, to look that up. But I think I think you can Google it. I think if you, if you're par if you ask for a pardon, the only way you can be pardoned is you have to. That's like saying forgive me. So forgive me for what okay, I did. But okay, but but in this case with Nixon, he didn't mm -hmm. ask to be pardoned. Right. Oh, I don't know. I think it was part of the deal to make Ford president. No, I don't know about well, that, but it, I, it, I, you I, don't I, know that, okay? I don't well, know never, that. So he never asked. You're right. He didn't ask for a pardon. Ford just did it. Yeah. So I don't think it's actually called a pardon. Let me Google that. I think it was a pardon, if I remember correctly. But you oh, know. he was pardoned. Pardoning, pardoning him. Unlike Alan, I'm going to admit when I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Are you home right now, uh, Brian? Oh, oh you I, sound I can't so hear good you. With your I can't hear you. Microphone blocked. I'm using my personal computer because our company is doing something with Zoom. They're changing it over or something. Trying to get rid of Zoom. That wasn't the question. I am home. Yes. Oh, you're home. Yeah, because you're in a different angle. Where are you from? Uh, where you were? Yes, I have a different angle because I'm my my other laptop. Oh, okay. He likes to keep us guessing. Uh, uh, are they going to stop using Zoom? Yeah, because they use Teams. Teams is uh, Teams has folders for us to put projects in, and it's it's a lot more compatible for for companies. What company makes Teams? Okay, it's not anything that you were dissatisfied with. Microsoft. Zoom. Microsoft. It wasn't that you guys were dissatisfied with Zoom. No, it's just uh, Teams is much better platform for us. A lot of the companies are going to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've been going for that for a while. So finally, they're saying, this is a waste of our money, so get it off your computers. Yeah. But anyway, so this trial, I think this week has been kind of interesting and fun, you know. Um, but I didn't think that, you know, that they, they they probably should have just had her stick with the story about how they offered her the hundred and thirty thousand dollars and because that's what the whole thing's over it's not over whether she had sex with him or not that's just you know everybody wants to hear that talked about because it's salacious but it has nothing to do with the case and if you Jimmy remember Kimball. well it does because she had the act and then had to be paid for well, no, not necessarily. So it's, a kind of, it's kind of the background. No, she wasn't paid for the acts. She was paid to keep her mouth she shut tried. about Yeah, yeah but they on. have to establish that she had something to be paid for. Well, to, that's to, right. to, to not talk about what went on between them. No, well, they don't have to get down into that detail, but they have to say that she actually was there, this is what she did, and that's what they were trying to yeah, cover well, up. Well, what happened was... With, they don't have to say everything else about it. You may remember with another one of his cases recently... They kind of uh, said they had to kind of throw some stuff out. Which trial was that? I'm I'm losing all sense of what trial <laughs> comes when and doesn't come. Uh, mm -hmm. Am I wrong about that? What was there, what was the case? Was it the one right. with my law with my judge? Where I think it might have been your guy. Where they said that there was a, there was a bunch of information in the trial which was not needed because it had nothing to do with the you know the problem at hand that's what trump's claiming now no no i don't think he's, he's not that. claiming that are you paying attention to this trial at all okay you know, as little as possible yeah well then don't comment on it okay <laughs> you know, I mean, yes i was listening to you guys early alex when you were talking about the trial and you know what popped in my head too no. See, Trump, Trump is very slippery. And I know you're following the trial, Alan, because you were talking about it. Yeah, so following. listen to this, Alex. You know when Trump goes outside and holds his little soiree and gives his whole 
This is what, like you said, he wants to always talk about what's going on. Kind of gives us a on. preview of what it's like for him to be behind bars because he's always no, behind but, that gate. Yeah. yeah, but think about this, Alex. He's smart, Trump, and I'll tell you why. He go. He knows he's not going to take the court stand because he doesn't want to uh, incriminate himself on the stand. So he goes outside in New York and spews his nonsense of what's going on. He wants to get to one of these juries, one of the trial people who listen to this. And if they feel, hey, I can say whatever I want outside the court. No, I'm not he can, go no, he can't. Here. But he can't. But they're trying to shut him up, and no, he keeps but trying no, to do it. No, but he can't him. say anything outside there. Uh, part of the reason why he has gotten popped several yeah. times for uh, uh, going against the gag order the gag is because order, of yeah. some of those comments he makes at the rail. You know, that's right. Yeah, and he and that's his whole. This I'm telling you something. He really does want to go to jail. They, oh, they he want wants. To to, he wants to go to jail overnight. He does case. bad. Yeah, that's his outcome. I think. Wait, Come on, out. You have I to think be. In his it. head, he's thinking it was good for Hitler. Yeah, really, because it was wrote, good for Hitler. He wrote Mein Kampf in 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 jail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Alex Trump is not as dumb as we think. I hate to say it. Well, nobody said he was dumb, but nobody I don't think said he's he was bright. particularly bright either. No, I mean, I, I don't. I don't know. I just don't trust he's this guy. He's trying gangster. to get one of these girls. He's got a he's thug mentality. What's that? He's got a thug mentality. He does, yeah. He does. I give you that, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I I just, I don't know. I just, to me, it's, uh, to me, there's something, I, I don't think he's going to get off on this. I really don't. I don't think they get, he's going to beat this. I really don't. Well, you know, I mean, this is a guy who feels he has a certain entitlement. Yeah. And he should be able to get away with this. I do whatever I want. Like the spoiled kid. I do whatever I want. I get whatever I want all the time. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, was, you know, let me put it this guys, way. You know, uh, you know uh, Alan was talking about uh, uh, him and uh, her having a sexual relationship. And the reason it's not the crux of this case is it's not important to this case. It's only important that they had some kind of an ongoing relationship that he wanted her to keep quiet about. And, yeah, that, and, and then he paid her in exactly. a way that was not legal. Hey, Alex, can I ask you a question? Then? This guy, Trump, like you said, never wanted to pay his actual workers who did work for him. Do, oh. Alan, do you really think he would pay somebody $130,000 if she didn't uh, sleep with him? Charlie's had his hand up for a while, Tony. No, but I mean, I'm answering you that question, though. No, well, I I, no, I think he would pay $130,000. Yeah, I think he would, because I don't think he would pay anybody if they didn't, he don't want to pay them when they actually well, see, do here, it. Here's what happened. Here's here's what they're saying happened. All right, Charlie. Whatever happened in Lake Tahoe happened in Lake Tahoe. Okay, what they're saying is is that after the fact, uh, he had this whole. He was he wasn't running for president at that time, so he didn't mm. care if anybody found out or anybody knew. You know, but yeah, I fucked her. You know, one of those kind of guy things. Mm. You know, but then he said decided he was running for president, and then that whole. Access Hollywood tape came out, Billy Bush, and yeah. they saw the embarrassment of that, and they wanted to prevent any further embarrassment. And they exactly. went looking. What do you have in your closet that you don't want to talk about? And what he, what they figured was, hey, there was this thing that went on at Lake Tahoe. We better get a hold of Stormy Daniels and offer her money to keep her mouth shut. All right. Uh, and then there was the other woman. Uh, what's her name? McDougal. Uh -huh. Dougal. Yeah. Karen McDougal. Yeah. Uh, she was paid more. She was paid one hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, he's just doling out checks. That was the, that was the catch and kill thing at. Uh, oh, the, the, that's why guy uh, uh, Pecker, uh, whatever his name was. Uh, uh, Pecker, how can you forget that name? Exactly. Yeah. You know. It's like come on. Yeah. So yes, uh, Charlie. And was she was he with McDougal when? Uh, sh oh, sorry, sir. No, Charlie, okay. go ahead, Charlie. Charlie. I just wanted to clear this up. In nineteen fifteen, the Supreme Court said they had a ruling that said mm -hmm. you have to admit you're guilty in order to receive a, a pardon okay. yet gerald ford pardoned nixon without him ever admitting that he was guilty hmm so did he so ever really get did, away with that did, did he, he ever legally get, knew he well, was a crook well the mm -hmm. question is did he legally get pardoned yeah or, or was he thrown in jail or anything or indicted or whatever 
Mm-hmm. Would you say when he stepped down, though, Charlie, you think they had a, a backroom deal to say just resign? Sure that was part of the deal, yeah. I'm but, sure I mean, was. Well, he was actually, he was actually pardoned from anything he may have done. He mm-hmm. never, I don't think, admitted to anything. Right, and, he did. Uh, he refused to. What? Nixon refused to admit to any crime. Well, he said he didn't. He wasn't involved in the cover-up, yeah. you know, Ford, Watergate uh, and so on. First, Ford wanted him to admit to his crime that he did the crime in order to get the pardon, and Nixon refused to do it. Wow. And finally, Ford gave in and gave him the pardon anyway. Yeah. That's what Wikipedia says. So. On. Yeah. So they could never. They. They. You know what happened is it's strange. Hmm. They busted a lot of people there. Uh, in that case, yeah. you know the, the Watergate guys. Watergate, right? Yeah, a lot of people went to jail. A lot of people went to jail over that, including some of the members of the administration. Yeah, if you may remember. Um, Ehrlichman. Yeah. All. The- yep. So they all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, in in this case, um, the same thing is true. I mean, you guys had Cohn going to jail for the very thing that Trump is being tried for. Yeah. Mm. Okay, and he was found guilty, or no? He admitted his guilt. And he admitted, yeah, you're right. Yep. Yeah. So you know, I mean, it's it, it's just a it's a it's a, it's a cluster deal, you know, no question about it. I'd say cluster fuck, but I don't want to get demonetized. So. They're gonna they're going to go after Cohen and say he's a convicted felon. Well, it, it doesn't matter. And his credibility. That's yeah, what but what he's convicted of is the same crime that Trump Trump for. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, uh, you know, and the argument can be made just because the guy uh, is uh, convicted doesn't mean that he's lying. Yeah. True. That's true. You know? it's true. I mean, they're going to try. Of course, they're going to try that. Just like they, they did the, the porn star thing with uh, with the Stormy Daniels kind of trying to say, oh, you know, she's nothing but a cheap slut. Look at her. She's trying to extort Trump, exactly. which she never did. I don't know. I never spent that much. Yeah. Hey, here's a question. <laughs> hey, Alex. Yeah. And this is for Alan. How do you think they got John Gotti? Alan, Sammy the Bull flipped him. He was as guilty of killing how many people? Yeah, it yeah. wasn't a pardon. No, well, he went right Sammy to jail. The Bull I think Sammy the Bull must have killed like what 40 he, people. What he's saying about Sammy the Bull grew Meaning like he was guilty, but he was a criminal, but they believed him. What he's basically saying, he saying about Gotti. What he's saying about Sammy the Bull is that Sammy the Bull uh, was a known criminal. And yeah. certainly could not be considered reliable, but he, uh, you know, he ratted on. He got uh, a deal Gandhi. with the feds. Yeah, yeah. that's right. They accepted his testimony. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yep. He's still alive, isn't he? I think yep. he is. Did he die, Sammy? Or no, I don't no. got him for a long time. Probably should have him. No, I think Sammy the Bull. Sammy still might be alive, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. They moved him in witness they protection to Arizona. And there was a thing, I don't know, maybe five, ten years ago, something like that. Wait a minute, how do you know they moved him to witness protection in Arizona? Wasn't <laughs> was that good say, what's his address? Oh, well, this is, this is <laughs> but, So every, every, yeah, his, his son and another friend were uh, bringing in MDMA, psychedelic drugs, whatever it is. And every pill that came into the United States, Sammy got a nickel. And, they, and when the FBI raided his house, there were millions and millions of packages of these drugs. A lot of nickels. MA is ecstasy. Yeah. Thank you. I, I hear. I heard. I hear. Yeah. 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 I know what it is, but that's okay. I wanted to see if anybody else did. Figures Brian would know. An absolutely mm-hmm. non dangerous drug. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. Keep you know, water in hand and you're all yeah, you keep on the water. How do you yeah, know right. it's dangerous being dehydrated? What yeah. do you what do you say? Yeah. The water. What do you say, yeah, Alex? I said, you know, somebody said, a nickel, how do you get rich? Well, when you got fifty million pills a month coming into the country, yeah. I'll take the nickel on every pill. Yeah. 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 You're a cop, you're not you're supposed to look the other way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah, I I'm forgot sorry. about that part, Tony. You forgot about that part. You're on the other corner when I'm over here at 4 o'clock. Okay, here's your money. <laughs> uh, but, it, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, I, I, I find this trial to be yeah. kind of uh, fascinating. You know, it is. Yeah. I mean, I, at, the, at this you. point, uh, up until this point, I didn't find it fascinating. Alex, you think they get the other trials on time? That's what I'm hoping no. for. No. 
They've all no, been they held up. Any. They've all been they're all put, they've all been put on hold. Yep. So with any luck, he will lose the election, and then he will have to answer up to some of these things. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, I, I, he ain't going to, you know, I hope he doesn't win the election, and I don't think he's going to. I, I think he's going to fade. I really do. I can't see people voting for him. Well, you know, I can't. It, it seems ridiculous that anybody would, but they do. Yep. There are people that swear by this guy. Yes, Jeff. Get it. Jeff? Are you muted? You're, you're muted. Jeff, Good you're job. muted. Right. There you are. I, um... Yeah, a lady he's being interviewed uh, in uh, Arizona or someplace. And the lady said, well, I'm really, I can't understand why he did some of these dirty things. That's terrible. They didn't say like, oh, well, we, we won't use him as president or anything like that. It was just like, God, he really screwed up the other day. But I'm sure he'll be okay. But he'll be okay, it's, it's yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I think that, you know, just his way of treating women is enough to completely stop me from ever voting for him. He has absolutely no respect for women. Yeah. You know, and um, uh, I, I, you know, I, I kind of, I feel sorry in a way that Stormy Daniels had to get caught up in the middle of this. Uh, you know, um, because uh, she didn't, I think this is great publicity for a porn actress, okay? It's a great publicity oh, really? up to Maybe a point. Well, her movie sells. But at a, it doesn't matter. Um, you don't, nobody buys porn anymore anyway. Uh, but the point is that she, uh, you know, that, that she had a, a good career going for her. And now this thing has happened. And she's had to spend a lot of her time dealing with it, and I don't think it's something she really wanted to have happen to her in her life. You know, I don't think that... I think the only thing she wanted out of Trump when mm -hmm. she saw him in, in Lake Tahoe and in subsequent uh, relationship with him is she wanted to get on The Celebrity Apprentice. Really? That's it, then? That was it, you know. It. And as soon as he called her up and said, well, I got bad news for you, we can't ha put you on the... The apprentice, they won't let me. That was the last she ever talked to him. She didn't. His she kept. He kept calling her. She didn't pick up the calls. Mm. You know. So all that's all she wanted out of him. She didn't want one hundred thirty thousand dollars. Hell, she she was one of the biggest paid porn people in the business. She didn't mm. need one hundred thirty thousand. Well, everybody needs one hundred thirty thousand yeah. dollars. But I of course, she had to sleep with this animal. I really. think that yeah. The, I think uh, McDougal didn't she like really have feelings for him? And, she had and, she had a relationship. She was with him. him. Was she with him when uh, Milan, Malaria was uh, pregnant? Uh, oh, it, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Stormy with was Baron, with him five five weeks after Baron was born. Four oh, weeks five, after yeah. Baron was born. Yeah, uh, Karen McDougal was with Trump for five years. Oh my God! Had a relationship That's... with him for five years. And she liked him. She really liked him. Yeah. Really? She was, yeah. She, she has, has, I think, written that she was, she was pretty well in love with him, you know. Hmm. But, you know, that, that's a waste of your time. Yeah. You know. I wonder what she saw in him. Huh? I wonder what she saw in him other than his money. Well, you know, you know money is a big aphrodisiac. I guess you're right. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, isn't it hard to fake it, like liking somebody just because they're rich? Well, yeah. why not? Well, <laughs> I know, wouldn't that be tough, though? You know, no. I mean, uh, it's amazing what people will do to have access to money. Yep, I guess you're right, yeah. I mean, let's face it, if Donald Trump weren't a billionaire, he'd never get yeah. laid. I was going to say, you think if he wasn't rich, would anybody like him? Then? No I think way? in his early years he would have. He was a fairly good-looking guy in his early mm -hmm. years. You know, it was, he wasn't disgusting. It wasn't vile. He yeah, wasn't even. Right. He wasn't even vile at the time that he had his relationship with Stormy Daniels. You know, uh, he um, he was uh, he was still 
pretty fit and young and you know he was playing golf and all that you know but uh, what can I say you know so Sammy the Bull gracefully I'll tell you that hmm? Sammy the Bull was born in 1945 he's still alive he's still alive hey you need anybody killed? Hey, we got Trump on the radar. <laughs> well, I be, be, I believe he killed somebody I knew. Really? Really? A, a, guy, by the name of De, a guy by the name of De Benedetto, who ran all the porn in New York City oh, and for most, that, most really? of the country. Wow. And uh, I knew him because I met him at a party at Al Goldstein's house. Uh, and De Benedetto was there. And uh, the reason he knew DB, that's what they called him, the reason he knew DB is anybody who was involved in the porn industry knew DB, okay? Oh, wow. And I remember standing there while he was talking to a whole bunch of people and going, oh, the district attorney of uh, Long Island wants me to move out of Long Island. Imagine him telling me to move out of Long well, Island, you know? Well, should I be scared? <laughs> and eventually, a De Benedetto yeah. got killed. Oh, and wow. supposedly, Gravano did it. I believe it. Yeah. Oh shit! So that's my movie. that's my one degree of separation from. Uh, Damn, from <laughs> Alex, I'd be scared. Let's, let's leave now. <laughs> In 1996, the, there's a, oh, a movie really? called Dottie. You can see it on YouTube. It's well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what about that? It's just well done. It's a well done movie. Who's who plays him? You remember that? Uh, uh, Asante, Asante. Oh, Armand Asante. Armand Asante. Yeah. I remember them making that, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway. The Don. Talks about somebody named DB that, that, yeah. that the bull killed. Yeah, yeah that's Senator. DB. It's the Benedetta. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Hey, Alex, remember the story? Remember Bruce David? He used to have that good story when they were dr He got, remember he was in well, the city. My friend Bruce David, who was the guy who yeah, created, that was a good story, created yeah. Midnight Blue Bruce. with me. Yeah. Uh, he, he had a, um, um, a, a sex magazine. That, was a good uh, that he put out, that he was putting out on the streets. And uh, they uh, called him, they, the uh, car pulled up and said, come <coughs> with us, get in the car. And they oh. drive him to Brooklyn oh, and they have a meeting with him. And uh, by the time that meeting was over, he no longer owned the magazine. <laughs> oh my God, that had to be that had to be a great and story. And I said, "Why did you sell it?" He said, "The other, the 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 uh, alternative was not a pleasant one." <laughs> I so your your signature will be on the paper, or your brain will be <laughs> yeah, on the yeah, paper. Yeah, exactly. Where are we going? Like, <laughs> it was that kind of deal, oh, uh, yeah. and that was. Uh, uh, and I, I don't know who did that. Maybe that was De Benedetto. I have that no idea. That was a good story he told on your show. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no, that's he was a good character, Bruce. He had good stories all the time. Oh, yeah, I, Bruce was terrific. I, I yeah, really liked. He was Bruce. entertaining. <laughs> he was always serious, but he had he had a great way of telling a story with you. I always well, enjoyed. Bruce David, that. in case people don't know, was the editor for years of Hustler magazine. Yeah, uh, and um, uh, he was, uh, you know. He was a he was a good guy. I, I, I Larry miss him. Flint? And Alex, remember he, he even wrote Family Ties. Remember you would say, and he wrote the TV show. He wrote a couple of episodes. episodes of Family Ties. Yeah. And Alf. And Alf, I used to watch those. Yeah, I remember yeah. him saying that. Yeah, he went out to Hollywood after he he, he kind of quit Hustler for a while and went on and started writing for TV shows, and those were the shows he wrote for. Yeah, you know, he was uh, a good guy. He was good on the show. I always very enjoyed talented that. guy. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and I like Bruce, and I miss Bruce. You know, are well, you going to be on tomorrow night, Alex? Why wouldn't I be? Amy's not going to be on. So well, I oh, I guess because Amy isn't on tomorrow <laughs> night, I'm not going to do a show, huh? <laughs> why would Alex go to Amy's son's graduation? That's why Amy's not going to be on. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have no idea why you asked that question. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I can see how if I'm not doing a show tomorrow night, maybe she'd decide not to, but, you oh, know. Okay, well, maybe. That's not the way things work around here. No, no, you're I not. I do thinking. a show come hell or high water, usually. You know. In fact, I'm taking too much for granted. <laughs> mm-hmm. So how's Adrian, Brian? I always have to check in on the uh, Adrian front. She, she's doing good. I picked her up from dance, so.
haven't seen her for a few days, and she was she was excited to see me. So it's good. You That's got a good, good relationship with her, you know. And, oh, there we go. go. See, yeah. there she oh, is. Oh, isn't that her nice? Burning. And oh, she oh. got rid of the, the, the color in me. her hair, the stuff in her hair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, she still has something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. The end there. I like it. There you go. It's growing yeah. out. Yeah. Charlie's got that too. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, they're asking how you're doing. Good. Good. How'd you do this season for dance? Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. okay. <laughs> and now she's going back on the bed to sit down. <laughs> Listen to the rest of the show. You know, the day is going to come when you're going to take her to school and she's going to want to want you to leave her off a block away from school. <laughs> are, you, are you ever going to be embarrassed of me? It, 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 let me ask you. Yes. Everybody's been a parent here. Am I right? That, that happens, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, two of us haven't been a parent. <laughs> well, I haven't been a parent either. Neither is Charlie. Oh, three of us. Oh, Tony, uh, Kevin, you know I mean? I forgot to, Kevin, am I right? Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. When yep. does it, when does that time come? About twelve, maybe thirteen. Oh, middle school, yeah. Yeah. Middle school. Around twelve and thirteen. Yeah. yeah. It's like. Uh, uh, okay. And then <laughs> when they get in their late twenties, yeah. they realize how wise you are. Well, I think as my father used to say, I used to I used to think my father was really stupid, and the older I got, the smarter he got. <laughs> That's know? what my daughter told me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're pretty good, you know. You still give her fifty bucks a week allowance, Brian? <laughs> no, I give her. Shh, I give her twenty. <laughs> I give her twenty. I give her twenty because she, she has that book. And now I just you got to ask just, for more. Yeah, I gave my I kids just, twenty bucks a week twenty years ago. <laughs> So okay, hold on. So so she's been she's more. been following my footsteps and gaining a little bit of weight. Well, I was I was still skinny until I was like twenty one, but she's been gaining a little bit of weight, a little tummy. So she oh, weighed herself. She was ninety pounds on uh, last Friday. That told her if she loses weight or if she maintains, I'll give her twenty dollars every week. So she's down to eighty eight point something. So. <laughs> Now yeah. she's she's been eating salads lately. Now this last week she started eating salads and a lot better food. So it's good. Another Kim Kardashian in the world. <laughs> well, no. What happens? I'll tell you what happens though is that um, if she does gain some weight, chances are she's then going to go through another period where she loses it. You know. Um, but, but she's already so tall. Yeah. See, like me, like Simon. Simon mm. was chubby, and then all of a sudden he had his growth spurt, and now he's so skinny. But. She's yeah, so she's so tall. I'm just afraid of it. How so tall it's... is she now? At at uh, eight, I think. Yeah, I don't know. How tall is she? You don't know. It's up to here. You don't have a thing like on the doorpost where uh, you where you put the little pencil marks and so on. We went through that. We did, and then I told the guy, make he sure your camera doesn't it. touch that. And they painted when they remodeled. Oh, you yeah, told I came me. Home yes. And everything's white. Jeez. Justifiable homicide. Yes, <laughs> that's. You can't get that back. You can't buy it back. No, you can't get it back. So she's gonna be she's gonna be pretty tall then. Is what you're saying? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So tall. the Asian part of her, which would dictate a certain amount of shortness, if I'm not a, 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 a wrong about age. that. What? There's she's five age. six. Well, I know yeah, that Tiffany's five six. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's tall for Adrian. Than average. Yeah, and and how tall is Adrian now? I don't know. Got to measure. We'll measure it tonight. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But do you think she's uh, she's she is she taller than her mother now? No, no, no. But she's she's getting she's there. getting up there. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, you but got Simon was from a different marriage, right? Yes. Yeah. But when you look at him and you look at her and I, it looks like he's my son because he's so tall. Uh -huh. And her brother, her brother's tall and uh, a stout young man. He's 23 or 24 now. 
and he uh, he looks like he's my son because he's like same body sizes. So. Well, you know we can, we can't tell here because it's very hard to ever tell here. I I don't know how tall or short, for instance, Charlie is. How tall are you, Charlie? Six feet. Six he, feet. Okay. Wow. I'm 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 actually I'm I'm down to five eight I think. Wow, I was shrinking? I was up Why around six shrinking? one. Yeah, well, you know, when you, as you get older, you shrink a little bit, mainly because the bones compress. The bones start to start to compress. Um, but no, because I went into the uh, doctor the other day, and mm -hmm. they, you know, they they do the uh, the weight, which I don't look at the, how much I weigh, uh, and then they ha put the thing on your head, and they see how tall you are, and they say, "Oh, five eight. And I went, "What?" You know. Mm -hmm. I've usually been, I've been about six feet, you know, for most of my life. And you're what, so you're what? Uh, you're five, uh, six, four, right? Wow. Yeah. So you're tall. How tall are you, Jeff? See, I, we have no idea how tall anybody is here. I'm no. not tall. And I get shorter every day. I'm sure and you see? <laughs> see I'm yeah, tall that's what they How yeah, tall are you, Brian? I'm yeah. I was six one most of my adult life. Oh, he's writing something down. I think I used to be 5'8". Why is he writing it down? It's like password. Kevin, how tall are you? Kevin? Kevin. What's that? Oh, how I'm sorry. Oh, I, <laughs> oh I'm, I didn't know you were talking to me. I'm I sorry. thought you were writing it down or something. The answer. No, 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 no. I was, I'm just kind of <clears throat> looking at hotels. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm 5'10", the last time I checked, and really? shrinking. Oh, yeah. shrinking. So I'm, I'm 5, oh, I know I'm 5'10", five uh, five yeah, that's what they said last time. So, how tall are you, uh, uh, Alan? Six foot. Six foot. Oh, everybody's kind of short here. How about you, Tony? Five, seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> My whole family, <laughs> Jeff, is short. <laughs> the midgets. I would I would be happy being five ten if somebody could take a hundred hundred pounds off of me. Yeah, yeah. Three three hundred pounds. I'm not tiny. That's for sure. No, no. nobody calls you tiny. Yeah. <laughs> I can get you into shape, but you don't live over here. I have you walk with me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I'm pretty. Good I would want to kill myself first. <laughs> I'm you and tiny. Walk with you. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, the good news is you'd lose some weight, but the bad news is you'd be walking with Tony. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah think right out. <laughs> Weigh the averages. Think of the fall of justice. <laughs> what else is happening in the news? I, I, it doesn't seem like there's anything. You know, usually there's always some kind of story that you go, "Oh, we got to talk about that." Oh, there's uh, big storms and. Well, tornadoes. I mean, there is there is a, 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 a RFK Jr.'s uh, brain worm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, which um, uh, that explains everything. Yep, he might be their president. Huh? Oh. He no. might be our no. Uh, no. Never. He's there's no chance of him becoming president. You, you know why, Jeff? Because he's he's only on four or five state ballots. Yeah, he, he, he qualified for a lot of the state ballots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also you've got to remember one other thing that he um, uh, he is a spoiler, and he could hurt somebody, and they say yeah. now that it's probably going to be Trump, not Biden. You know, oh, really? be well because I mean, uh, you take a liberal. Do you think he's going to vote for RFK Jr.? You really think so? No. You know. No, I mean, why would I do that? I'll vote for Trump again. <laughs> yeah, oh, you did vote for Trump last time, didn't you? You did a vote for Trump? No, you, not last time. You did in 2016, right? Right, right? But you didn't in 2020. No. Okay. Well, I decided so far I'm not voting for uh, I'm not voting for Biden. Really? Oh, okay. No. You know, I'm probably just going to leave that part blank on the ballot. I'll write in somebody's name in the damn thing. I don't want to write somebody's name in. That's a waste of time. Tony Magno. Oh, I would be honored if you wrote me. I'd be honored. honored. <laughs> Jeff, can you imagine that? They'd look me up. I'd be on jury duty. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, uh, the fact of the matter is that that uh, I, I don't believe in voting for somebody I don't believe in. 
uh, you know, uh, no matter how much the competition is a problem. I live in a state, New York State, where you know the Democrat is going to win the Electoral College here, all right? So all the electoral votes is going to go towards a, a Democrat, whether I vote or not. Same thing with California. Yeah, whether I vote or not, it's a fait accompli, okay? So my feeling is I would like Biden to know he didn't win by as much in New York as he thought he was going to win because he didn't get my vote and a lot of other people's votes because, of, for instance, his whole take on on uh, Israel is just so screwed at this point. He's been so lagging his feet. Oh, we're not going to send them any more money because they might kill some people in Gaza. Well, they already have with our weapons. You should have done this, you know, how many months ago and saved uh, uh, how many thousands of lives, but you didn't, you know? So, I mean... Uh, it doesn't matter. Netanyahu doesn't, isn't listening to him. It doesn't. I don't care if he's not offense. listening to him. You know, he's going on with the offensive anyhow. They have ammo. Well, then they don't need us, do they? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, a lot of Democrats and a lot of Republicans are pissed that Biden is not supporting Israel right now. So. Well, why should he be supporting Israel? He oh, he I'm... he'd be complicit in murder, basically. You know, and that's not right either. And somewhere along the line, you got to take a stand. You got to say, "Hey, you're killing people with our bombs, people that are innocent civilians, okay? And we don't want to be a part of that." And I think we have every right to say how our money is being spent. You know, mm -hmm. so that's my that's my. Uh, we've we've always backed Israel. That's part of the problem. Well, we we've always backed Israel because. I claim that it's, an, it's anti-Semitism is the reason why we are supporting Israel. Because politicians live with this weird idea that Jews are rich and they need their money to win elections. You know, and that money might be used against them. And it's that particular idea that is anti-Semitic. This, this is why a lot of colleges like uh, Columbia can afford to be who they are because a lot of rich billionaire Jews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what students are saying. Stop taking their money. Well, you know, I mean, it, it's it, all I'm saying is, is that uh, uh, I think that we have been too complicit in, in going along with Israel's bad behavior for the last many years, and it's time we did something about it, you know? Uh, and and uh, not feel that we are complicit uh, complicit in aiding and abetting uh, uh, genocide. So that's my case, and I'm sticking to it. But I, again, I've said that over and over again on this program. So nothing could be duller. Anyway, I'm going to start the music here, and so we can say goodbye to all of you. Uh, it's been nice, just a nice little hour. Uh, uh, Charlie, thank you so much, uh, and I, I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow, but then again, I hope it does so that we'll have you here. <laughs> well, actually, I'm not on fire tomorrow, so I'll be here. Oh, so you'll be here. See, he's very loyal that way, you know. Uh, and uh, thank you to Alan, you as well, for being here. And uh, by the way, I, you know, a lot of you, if you have a chance, go over and participate with Amy, too, because she comes on after us. And she does a really nice job, and... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go tonight. I'm gonna go tonight. You're gonna go tomorrow tonight. night. I'm gonna go tomorrow night. No, but she's no. not on tomorrow night. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Thanks to Jeff. Thanks to Kevin. And of course, thanks to the lovely and attractive uh, Tony. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, and uh, we'll say so long, everybody. There we go. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, uh, Amy is next. She's here with the intersection. Give her a call, would you? Because uh, she she hates being alone. Yeah. And I, I had to talk her down a couple of days ago from just being depressed about the fact that not a lot of people are calling. And uh, I'd like to see a lot of you people out there, especially the ones who don't call me, call her. Okay? Anyway, 
She's on Skype at uh, GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.